What's up guys, George, you're watching Retro GT, and today I have a new video for you guys. I'm going to be installing a trailer hitch on my Renegade, finally gonna do it, but I bought one very specific. They have multiple ones you can buy on Amazon, but I went to a specific website, it's called renegadeready.com. They have a bunch of sweet stuff. This bumper slash trailer hitch is very specific. So basically what it's gonna be doing, we're gonna be taking off the bumper, reinstalling a new bumper, taking off the actual bumper, metal bumper. That's what's gonna be the trailer hitch. And then we have to cut a uh, centerpiece, like a bezel for the centerpiece for the hitch to be exposed. So, so it's gonna take some work, it's gonna take some time. And with just me on it and filming, it's gonna take me a little longer. But I'm gonna go through the process. They have some really good instructions. So if you guys are interested in the same thing, their instructions are actually really, really nice. I'll try to guide us through the whole thing. So, watch me do it, hope you guys like it, and uh, let's get started. Okay, so here's the box. I'm gonna quickly open it up and kinda see what's in here. Oh, huh, nice. They give you a little accessories. That's really sweet. Cool. All right guys, so here is going to be our new bumper slash trailer hitch. It is fairly heavy. Uh, it is definitely powder, powder coated, so that's good. It looks pretty dang sturdy, looks pretty good. So far, I'm liking it. So, we got that, and we should have all our pieces, and it should be the wiring harness that goes with it as well. Yep, comes with this whole trailer hitch. Connectors, wiring, uh, little plug that says Jeep on it. That's really cool. Put it at the end of your trailer hitch. Bolts we're going to need. Fuse and uh, these tabs. So I was told that in um, some of the process you're going to break some of these off. And that's why we have these to replace them. And looks like we have a couple other things. And the instructions. Instructions are very important. We're going to use them a lot. And I'm missing something. Here we go. Very important. Oh, they gave us a koozie. Nice. Here's your bezel. This is going to end up going inside the middle of your bumper. Yeah, nice. It even says Mopar down here. It's nice. First thing we need to do, now this is depends on your vehicle. Since my car is lifted, I don't really have to jack it. I'll have plenty of room to work with. But you may have to jack your car just to get the rear tires off because we will have to remove the wheel wells. So I'm going to try to sneak around that and not lift it because it's going to take time and I really want to save as much time as I can. All right guys, as you can see, our first step is to unplug the negative terminal from the battery. After you unplug your battery, you want to start with the wheel well. And I've already started here. You're going to have all your retainers throughout this piece. So over here, you have your one two, three, these are your push tabs. Those are these guys. You'll have three on this side. Then you have a couple Phillips heads right here. We had uh, one, two, three, four down here. Fifth one's right down there, right down there. And then you'll have four of the 10 millimeter head that we need to remove. And you have one up here you got one back there, you can kind of see it right there, opposite side, and the other one's down in this little cove. So this is already out and ready to get pulled out. I'm gonna take this off and then I'll switch over to the passenger side and do the same thing there. All right guys, now that both sides have the wheel well out. So their next step is to remove this molding. We are gonna be breaking some retaining clips and that's okay, um, they provide you with some four green tabs that we are able to take off. They will be located on this side. Can't really get the camera in there very well, but I'm able to push these four out here using some needle nose pliers, but the others in here, two of them are gonna break for sure, the other two should come loose. I'm gonna set up the camera so you can see me do it and see how that goes.
Okay, as you can see now, I got the green clips out and pushed out from the back side, so we're good on this side. Started yanking a little bit here on this side. Looks like nothing's broke yet. There's no way of getting around it, they're gonna break, so we're just gonna have to go ahead and do it. There we go. Now that these are fully off, we can go to the other side, do the same thing. Now that we have both sides off, we're going to remove this seven millimeter hex bolt. It should be very easy on both sides. The instructions do show you how to replace your broken ones, broken blue tabs, but we're not gonna worry about that now. We'll take care of that when we're about to put it back on. So let's just keep going and uh, we'll move on. Okay, opening this up. I believe I've done this in a video before when I replaced my reverse lights. To remove this, there is a hex bolt in here that you can actually remove by hand. Be very easy. You just gotta turn it counterclockwise. You can hear it click. It'll pop out the tail light. We're gonna do the same thing on both sides. And uh, there is a screw we gotta get to. So, so next thing we're gonna do is remove a couple things. So we're gonna need a T30 torque bit. And uh, these are just thumb screws. Uh, you should be able to just remove with your thumb. If you see on the diagram, that's where we're gonna be located, all the hex holes and the two thumbs. So something weird with mine, they're supposed to be right here, but mine doesn't have them. So we're just gonna jump into the T30. Uh, we got one, two, opposite side. And then you got four across the bottom. One, two, three, four. After that, we should be able to actually pry the bumper off. So that's exciting. We're getting closer. So let me do that. We'll see what happens next. All right guys, as you can see, I was able to get the bumper off. No real struggle, came out pretty nicely. I should mention, in case your model is different, you may have a couple extra connectors, so be aware of that. But for the most part, we're good. Now we're gonna start removing the bumper itself, and then we're finally able to install the new one. I really like how these instructions have for specific models, Latitude, Sport, limited and then on the other side you got uh, specifically for trailhawk only so yeah nice instructions really do like them so we're gonna move on we're gonna be removing all the 13 millimeters from both passenger and driver side and we're also gonna remove these three rubber grommets that are in the frame on both passenger and driver side as well so let's take a look at that and we'll get it Okay, so those grommets are located right there. It's one of them, right there's the other one. And the third one, you can kind of see it peeking out right there. So yeah, be easy just to grab them and just pull them right out. There we go. Got one, we'll do the rest of them. Then we'll start unscrewing these. There should be three of them. One, two down here and three on the other side. Back here and then three on that side. I'll get the bumper off, these grommets off, and then we'll keep moving forward. All right guys, got these first three off. Something I wanted to show you slash mention, it is going to be very handy to have an extension because I barely have enough room to get to this one. As you can kind of see right here, barely have room to get that one. The extension here is working perfectly. I'm able to get it, but you definitely gonna need an extension. This is as far as mine goes. This one is 125 millimeter on my 13 deep socket. So it was just big enough. But yeah, let me take the rest of this off and we'll keep going. Okay, moving on. It does recommend you run the new 21 millimeter hex through the existing three on the new bumper first, so that way when you go to install it, it'd be an easier way to do it. We are gonna be replacing the 13 millimeters we had. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and do that first, and then we're gonna slide them in, and then we're gonna screw all six of them halfway through before we actually tighten them down. 
let's do it all right guys I'm back I took a little break I'm back at it again so when it comes to installing the new bumper you want to put these 13s back on um, you will not be able to use an extender piece anymore to get to this one this is kind of in the way you might have to break out a crescent wrench or another type of uh, sort of way this one back here is definitely the most annoying so you might have to come up here with a crescent wrench or some socket if you can get up in there but yeah we'll put these three on and then we'll have to bolt everything on from the sides and the bottom all right all right guys so it's been a little bit but I did run into a little issue I have to take care of now just a heads up when you install this when you go to put those three bolts on both sides sometimes they don't align perfectly with your existing holes so with that said I had to end up drilling out some more of the holes just so I can fit the bolts through and now everything's tightened up and ready to go while editing this video I realized I never actually filmed myself putting in the bolts that go into the frame so here's some quick footage you'll have to do it on both sides and I had to drill out the holes a bit on the frame just so they can fit properly I am going to show you the wiring harness that came with the whole set I know it might be confusing wires cords but it's actually pretty straightforward so if you look at this for example you have the two connectors like this well you have two of these you have the yellow one and you have the green one over here these guys plug into your tail light so they actually exchange so this goes into the tail light right here the harness and then this actually goes into the tail light I will pre install it but I want to fully install it next thing I got to do is cut out that piece that goes to the bumper here once that's cut out then we just throw everything back on so I think the toughest part is about to happen okay guys unfortunately it has gotten a little bit dark so I measured out the template I went ahead and cut out the first piece be very cautious when it comes to the these little lips here that's what's gonna clip in the little bezel piece I did use a combination of the Dremel tool and a little saw. It recommends you use a drill to drill these two holes on the end and then you're able to cut it out. So we'll give that a try. Maybe they'll call it after that and start up tomorrow. We'll see. All right guys, we're back. This is the next day. I ended up just getting as much as I could done, but it got too dark. So I ended up calling it for the day. A lot of what happened yesterday was just not prepped. I wasn't prepped. I didn't plan ahead I had to go find tools I had to go do this this and that so if you guys are gonna do this make sure you have everything you need right away now we're not having to scramble and waste time like I did yesterday I also did run into that hiccup which did take some time as well but going back at it we have the hitch fully on awesome it's ready to go last thing I did last night was I started to get the bezel put into the bumper and it was getting dark so I couldn't see too much and you know that's very very important stuff so let's take the bumper back out and see what we can do with the bezel okay and as you can see I have it all cut out I have those little notches cut in for the clips on the bottom as well so I can get it in I just have to define the holes I think a little bit better and then I'll be able to push it in and clip in so on the back of this we have those little clips both sides and on the ends so I just gotta work on the little detail and then I'll be able to put it in alright guys here it is that's what it looks like I went out and hosed it down real quick because it had shards all over it so yeah I think it turned out well uh, it took me a little bit to kind of finalize the little holes for them but basically you just got to push from the bottom and push down on it to get those clips to go in a little bit of a fight but hey it looks good now only thing that's really left is putting those clips back in the ones that broke and then after that you can just throw everything back on yeah I think we're pretty much done okay guys so I was looking at the instructions on how to wire everything and it's very very confusing so what I did is I wired it I have it going through here down and over it's going through this grommet this leads up to the fuse box back here and everything's just kind of there for now but basically you want to plug in the yellow to the end of your tail light connector the green cord is going to go through here and you want to mount it to the back end of your tail light connector here 
And that's pretty much it actually. So I'm gonna do that later. I'm just gonna put everything back together and we'll see how it goes. Okay guys, so replacing these clips were actually really easy. So because they're already broken, what I did is I just grabbed the back with some vice grips and just broke it off and then I was able to pop it out. And the new ones, they just slide right in and clip in. So yeah, very, very simple. All right guys, we are done. Check out the end result. Oh yeah, I was able to put this back in. The bumper also came with a little screw in there. The cutting of the bezel was a little annoying, but I managed to get it to work. I do recommend you put a little bit of maybe caulking around it. I'm gonna definitely do that because I feel like it didn't seal it very well, especially on this side. But yeah, overall I think it turned out pretty well. All right guys, finally done. It took a little too long, but it got done. I wanted this hitch for many reasons, obviously to pull stuff later. I do wanna get a John boat sometime. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this bumper, this kit, was right around $800 mark, a little bit more with shipping and whatnot, taxes. So, is it worth it? Yes and no. It's worth it if you want something that's not gonna negate your lift. When I say that is, every other hitch you can get, it's gonna be sitting underneath everything, and at that point, you know, you just put a two-inch lift kit for nothing, because now you still have something you can bottom out on. I say yes, because it replaces your bumper, for something a little more solid and it's definitely heavier it's definitely more solid and no because that is a lot of money to spend on a hitch and it's a lot of work but at the same time if you're willing to put the time and money into it then yes it's worth it i bought it because i thought it was worth it it might not be worth it to you guys but with that said that's all i have for you guys i'll link some videos at the end of this one hope you guys enjoyed it this is george i'll see you guys in the next one